Okay, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation to the full playlist on the screen. I recommend watching the previous videos before continuing with this video. Now, uh, last week I showed you how to create an empty image file that we then, f then formatted and put some files on and tested with a virtual machine. That was a single file system. You can create images, as we've seen in previous tutorials, uh, that have multiple partitions with different formats on them. And that's what we're going to do today. We're also going to look at a different way of mounting those. Last time, uh, last time I showed you how to mount an image with multiple partitions, which was a couple of weeks ago, we looked at finding where each uh, partition started using DD to set an offset. Well, today we're going to use a tool called KPartX. Uh, it should be in your repositories. Just search KPart and it should come up. Install it. Once it's installed, uh, it's going to make some of these steps uh, a little bit easier to do. Um, so first things first, we're in an empty directory here. Uh, let's go ahead and create a empty image file. So just like last time, we'll use sudo dd. We'll give it an input file and we will just use our... Um, device of zero that will just fill the file of empty zeros and the file will be output file of equals I uh, again we'll just call it test.ing and do that it'll just go on forever till your hard drive is full we don't want that we want to say count and we'll give it a size like that which should be 26 megabytes um, so create a 26 megabyte image obviously create it to the size that you need for your project now again, if we sudo fdisk and uh, list out the partitions, there are none. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create some partitions. So sudo fdisk and the name of our file here. And we'll say n for new partition, p for a primary partition. We'll hit enter to start at the beginning cycle, the first cycle of our image. And we want this first partition, we'll make it 10 megabytes. So plus 10 MB, capital MB. We'll hit enter. And then we'll create a another partition, new partition, uh, P. And we'll automatically make it the second partition. Where do we want to start? We'll just use the default and we'll let it go to the end of the file. So we'll just hit enter. So we've used up our whole image. First partition is 10 uh, megabytes. The second partition is what's ever left over. W and enter to actually write those changes. Now, if we sudo fdisk and uh, we list out our test image, you can see there are two partitions. We didn't set them to any other type, so they are Linux partitions, so they can be ext formats. Uh, and we'll make the first one ext2 and the second one ext4, just to have different formats on each partition. But how do you how do you partition that format? Uh, last time when we uh, wanted to format the whole image, we used uh, mkfs, make file system, dot ext2, we'll say, and the name of our file. But that would do the whole file. We just want to do the partitions. How do we point our make file system at certain partitions? Well, that's where, where kparted comes in, or kpartx. Um, we use kpartx, and we're going to do dash av. And you can mount each partition individually, but this will mount all the partitions uh, at once. And we'll give it our image name test. Or not, not mount them. They aren't mounted yet. It actually will, is making a virtual loopback devices pointing towards uh, the partitions in this image. But we'll hit enter, and you can see it added a loopback 0, P1 for partition 1, uh, loopback 0, P for partition 2. And over here it's saying... Uh, device loopback zero for both of those. And if we were to sudo, um, we don't need the sudo, we'll just list device, and we were to list out, um, sorry, all the loopback devices here, you can see we don't see the different partitions. We just see the loop devices. There's no P1 and P2. That's because they are mapped somewhere else. If we list out device under a folder called mapper, we'll just list everything in here, you can see that there is a loop 0 P1, 
loop 0 p2 so now we can say sudo make fs dot ext we'll say 2 again for the first partition and we will point that at our mapper loop p1 there we go we just formatted our first partition and for the second partition we will make that a ext4 format just to make it something different so we changed the to the next partition and what we want to uh, format it as we'll hit enter so now we have both formatted um, at this point to remove those loopback devices we can use sudo k parted again or part x i keep saying parted but k part x dash d will uh, delete those devices it's not deleting the file it's just removing them uh, from test image and there we go it says it's deleted and if we were to list out uh, device mapper you can see they're gone now but if we were to sudo fdisk dash l our test image you can see those partitions even though we saw the partitions before they are formatted so now how do we mount those partitions um, well we could again go get the offsets and use dd or uh, mount and offset it um, but in this case uh, we can use k parted again uh, if we didn't remove them we wouldn't have to do this again but we deleted them so we're going to say k part x dash av again and our test image again it made those same the same links map the same links to that image file uh, so now we can just say sudo oh we have to make some directories to mount to so i'll just make directory mount one and mount two so in the directory we're in we have two empty folders now i can say sudo mount device mapper loop one to mount one and i can do the same thing for partition two and oops that i accidentally put that backslash in there but it didn't give me an error it looked like uh it just ignored that okay i use the mount command and we can see that they are mounted we can see this device is mounted to our current directory under mount one same with this one tells us that this one's an ext2 and this one's an e ext4 they are both read write um, so now I can uh, list out what's in mount 1 and list out what's in mount 2 and you can see they have their default because they're ext formats uh, lost found uh, folder uh, so they are mounted and they are modifiable I could go in there and uh, so we'll go into mount 1 and uh, We'll just touch a file, call it one, two, three. Uh, again, we created it as root, so you have to be sudo or root to modify it. Again, you can change that as, as need be. Um, but you can see we just created an empty file called one, two, three. So if I was to move back out of that folder, I can sudo and unmount them using the umount command, just like we did any other device that we mount. I'll unmount both of them mnt1 and mnt2 uh, i'm also going to again just like our previous tutorial just change the uh, permissions to it so that everyone can read and write even though root's still going to own the file uh, in this particular case we'll point towards that image there because now if i don't do that i wouldn't be able to uh, mount it inside a virtual machine unless i was running the virtual machine as root which would be weird uh, but i'm going to say sudo i'm going to say qmu using that as my virtual machine again I'll just, just like last time, use CD-ROM of the Slitaz uh, ISO that we have in the directory above us. Just as an example, you can use wherever distro you want. Uh, I will say make hard drive A, our test image here, and we will say boot from the C for CD-ROM. Okay, I actually think <laughs> I've been putting C, it's actually supposed to be D for CD-ROM. There we go. That was my mistake. Uh, we'll boot into Slitaz here. So again, we're using uh, this emulator uh, virtual machine to boot the ISO, the operating system from the bootable Linux Live CD ISO of Slitaz, uh, but we set the first hard drive to be our image. And so now that we're booting, uh, we should be able to mount the separate partition, just like last week we we mounted HDA, which was our entire image. It was the drive itself. We're actually going to mount HDA1 and HDA2 because we actually have separate partitions within this image. 
as soon as this is done booting. And configuring user, checking the network, getting an IP address, keyboard configuration, loading xorg, and we get our GUI with a basic x term, and we can su, again default password on Slitaz is root, uh, on the live CD, and we will mount mount device HDA1 to MMT and we can list what's mount what's mounted and you can see that on mount we have an ext2 we can list what's in there which will just be our lost and found nr123 file now we will unmount MMT and we will mount now HDA2 and if we run mount to list what's mounted, you can see HDA2 is mounted, and it's calling that an ext2, which is odd, because it should be an ext4. I don't know if that's a Slitaz thing, but our drives did mount, and they mounted properly, because one had the 123 file and the other one didn't. Um, so besides that weird little thing that might just be a Slitaz thing, showing ext4 as an ext2 in the mount command. Um, what if I do fdisk-l uh, device hda oh, that's right, it just shows them as Linux partitions. Well, again, I don't know why that's showing ext2 it is an ext4 format, um, but I do hope you found this useful in case you needed to create a multi-partition image um, from scratch so that you can copy files into the different partitions. That's how you do it. I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description uh, to my website. You can go there to get to my IRC channel, which is on Freenode, pound Films by Chris, again with a K. It's a great place to come in if you need to talk to me. A bad place to talk to me if you need to get a contact, if you're trying to contact me, is pretty much anywhere else. I'm just saying that because. Um, I don't check them often. I don't. I basically really never check my YouTube messages because I just get too many there. Um, every once in a while I do, and I just see all these new ones of people asking me questions from months and months ago. If you want to talk to me, if you, you know, for whatever reason you have a question or you just want to talk to me, the IRC channel is the place to do that. Uh, trying to make that clear so that you don't waste your time writing me a two-page message in a YouTube message that I will probably never see. Because um, I just feel bad that people do that, even though I constantly tell them, go to the IRC channel. Uh, and if you do come to the IRC channel, it's not a place to come ask a question and get an answer right away. It's a place to come hang out, help others, and let others help you. We mingle, we learn from each other. Most people who are in there regularly are in there 24 7 even though they're not at the keyboard 24 7 and i recommend you do the same the more of us that hang out in there the more we can learn from each other i want to thank you for watching this tutorial and i hope that you have a great day